Somebody know where that comes from? Yeah. Which brand it's from? Intel. Yeah, right, it's Intel. So it can also be a sound. Um, it can also be a place which is very familiar to you. So it can be nearly anything, in fact. But it's much more than just the name you, you read or the brand they have or the adverts they place or their logo. It's a lot of those things together. So why now should we invest in a brand? In fact, because it creates an emotional bond. Um, it surpasses the product experience. So you don't only think about Coca-Cola being a soda which uh, sparkles and which has caffeine in it, but you'll also know it's um, known for happiness and for good times and feelings with friends and things like that. So you want to build a, create a relationship that adds value. For example, there will be many people in this audience who have an iPhone or another Apple device. You'll know it's much more than just the functional aspects of having an Apple. You'll never want to switch again because it has value to, to you as a brand. So it reduces elasticity by creating premium. For example, price premium, you'll be happy to pay much more for your Apple phone than you'll do for other phones because you have, you have that emotional connection with the brand. A service premium is when the brand exceeds other brands in service that much that you won't have to want to switch anymore and become extra loyal. And a distribution premium is, for example, like Coca-Cola because they're so omnipresent and that you can find them in every shop that you'll be more uh, willing to buy them because you see them everywhere. So it's more than just the brand, it's a belief system. It's an entire network of emotional and functional things combined. So for example, when you look at all these brands, they're more than their functional aspects. You can immediately think about the emotions that it, uh, that it brings to you. And sometimes people even get lost in words and become such big fans of the brand that they don't, won't need uh, to use the words to express their love for the, for the brand. So let's go back to the basics of storytelling. Now, storytelling is not something new. It might be very, a very hype word in advertising right now, but it existed long before recorded history when people in caves started drawing things on the caves um, to tell a story to each other. And over time, it evolved into other uh, channels. People came together around a bonfire, they started writing stories in books, they started writing movies, and eventually um, telling stories on social media. But the true elements of the story, they have always stayed the same. We have a vast sequence of uh, elements which will be in place at every story. For example, we've got, uh, when we look at the global warming, we've got a message. If we're not going to do something, if we're not going to change our behavior, we're all going to die. That's the message of this story. Then we've got the players. You've got the industry, you've got traffic, you've got the cows who make too much emission. Those are all key players in this story. Then we've got the conflict, the good versus the bad. In this case, the purity of earth and the bad of the industry and everything people do to that earth. Then we've got the hero. In this example, Al Gore, who comes with a solution and who um, makes a big topic about his story. And then we've got the plot. So these elements must be in, in place when writing your story, whether it's for a destination or for, a, for another kind of brand. Every story needs to have those elements. So I have a question for you. Now, when you've heard the previous slides, what do stories and brands have in common? Somebody who can? They're both belief systems. So both a story as a brand creates an entire network of emotion, emotional and functional aspects. Because brands, in fact, they are stories. A brand is not just a brand, it's a collection of stories. For example, um, yeah, stories in your brains. So they are based on things you've heard from other people, things you've read online, things you've experienced yourself, um, advertising you've seen about them. All those things together, they contribute to your story. Let's take, for example, Tom Shoes. Uh, probably some people will know this brand, but they have a story that for every shoe you buy, they give a, a pair of shoes to underprivileged children. That's one aspect of their bigger story. Um, then on the other hand, there's people contributing to their story as well. People who wore their thumbs and post on social media. Uh, some people telling about their five brothers all wearing, wearing Tom shoes. They all contribute to the same story. So a story is a way to structure the reality around, around you in your head and to um, make sense of the world and to deal with dilemmas and to make decisions. 
So they're a sort of reference frame because it's a belief system and it's easier to attach to your belief system than to your gut, yeah, it is your gut feeling, but if you think it's a rational choice, it will be easier. And when, you, when it's embedded in your belief system, you'll rather uh, categorize it as a functional aspect. So that's what brands do, because every day we are faced with so many choices. Everywhere we come, we see thousands of products which we can choose between. When we come into the supermarket, we have to choose which toothpaste we want, which, which shampoo we want. And when you're a brand that, um, that succeeds in creating that emotional bond, and succeeds in um, creating that pattern of associations, people will be rather tended to choose your product because it's just easier. Now, what are the steps for building a story? <coughs> so we've got a little scheme here which describes the different steps when building your story, which comes down to this kind of schema. First of all, you have to go uh, and do some story mining. You'll have to see which stories are uh, present and which can feed your own story. Once you've collected a lot of stories, you can build a storyline of it. So you describe what story you want to tell because every one of your stakeholders, they need to tell the same story. What you stand for is embedded in that story, so everybody needs to know it. Then we go to storytelling. That's uh, the storyline we've created. We're going to put it in a kind of concept, uh, a, a fixed structure in which you want to tell your story. It can be an advertising format or a way of telling your story or other things. Then we go to selling, because of course, your story is meant to make your brand sell, or when you're a destination, to make people visit your brand. So we want to attach a certain call to action to your, uh, to your message. So we're going to tra translate the concept into a sellable concept. And then we go to story buying, when people eventually come to your destination, or they will buy your product. And the next step, story living, when a, when a brand is so immersed in pe people's lifestyle, like Apple, they become part of their story living. So we believe at Brandtum that every story and every brand needs to be triple A. Triple uh, A is a combination of authenticity, accountability, and activation. Those are three elements of which we think that you can't just uh, fail on one or fail on two. You need to, need to have all those three elements in place when building strong brands and strong stories. So for example, authentic, be who you are, if you look at the Dove campaign, it's a clear example of a brand who, um, who tells they're representing women like they really are and then using real women in your advertising campaigns is an example of authenticity. But also the story I heard about uh, Albert, Alberta, about reason, re, using real stories and footage, for me is a perfect example of how you can be authentic. Accountable, doing what you say and uh, delivering your promises. For example, you've got uh, Nordstrom, and there's a story about them that one day they, took, uh, they refunded somebody who came in with his winter tires for a car. But in fact, they have never sold winter tires at Nordstrom, but anyhow, they took them back. So it's a, a way of being accountable um, to your promise of being customer friendly. And whether the story is true or not, we'll never know, but it's an example of how to be accountable or create an accountable story. Then activating, Brett, I've got a little video, if it works. Yeah. Traffic present here. Push. You feel a good cool. Yeah, yeah, cool.
Meter Trafik. Bis genau gleich. So I think there are no words needed to tell you that this is an activating example of a brand who knows to translate a very boring product into a, a real experience um, to activate people and use the brand. So um, let me tell you something about the storytelling effect. How many times do you think that other people will tell something about they've experienced when it's a good experience or a bad experience? When it's a good experience, how many times would somebody tell it to somebody else? Yeah, correct, it's three times. And when it's a negative experience, it will be nine times. So you see, it's a, these are also factor um, research numbers from before social media, because nowadays when you have a negative experience, you'll post it on your Facebook wall and hundreds of people will have seen it right away. So the three, nine times, it doesn't even count those factors. It's called the ripple effect. When you throw a rock in the water, it will create waves. The bigger the wave and the more negative your story will be, the more negative the waves will be, uh, the, the bigger the waves will be. So stories that have triple A that are authentic, accountable, and activating, they have the power to spread. They have the power to make people tell about your brand and become an ambassador for, the, for your brand. But when it lacks triple A, and they see that you're not really who you, who you tend to be, or that you um, do not deliver what you promise. It's the same way, but not in a good way. So from storytelling to story selling, because of course, storytelling is good, but in the end it must lead to something. So now, why does storytelling lead to story selling? Because they have an effect on your brain and your behavior. Because the research showed that when you tell a story instead of just uh, putting out a message, it will create connection with your brand and empathy for your brand. And those two aspects combined, they lead to more trust. And when people trust your brand, they will be, uh, they'll rather buy your brand. So that way, stories will lead to sales indirectly. For example, uh, the research has showed that when um, storytelling is used for a brand, the buying intention for that brand will raise by two, the NPS, so the Net Promoter Score, uh, the amount of people who will, um, who will be advocates for your brand, will raise to 33%. Storytelling has a positive effect on employer branding, and your brand attributes have a 75% higher uh, con attribu attribution. Vision. So what is the link between storytelling and the digital and social era? Over the years, we've already told storytelling has evolved. We're not longer around the bonfire, but we've got new channels. They have multiplied and they have digitalized, so they have changed drastically. Some mix up with my slides since of fonts, but don't, <laughs> don't mention that. Um, so what's the true nature of digital storytelling? First of all, it's dem democratic. Um, so everybody can contribute to your story, so you don't keep the full control over your story. Second of all, it's direct. You post something and it will be in the, in the world after two seconds. It's no longer that we send a letter to somebody and we have to wait for days until it arrives. Our stories can be distributed at any time directly. It's also non-linear because um, there's not only a sender and a receiver, but we became all senders. So everybody is part of your story. And it's multiple channel. When you're advertising and you're using storytelling, you do not only use um, commercials on TV, but you'll do it across every device and on every channel. So now, social, uh, social media and storytelling, are they a match made in heaven or not? In fact, social media and storytelling, they're both centered around communication and about building relationship. So they have a common interest, in fact. So that's why we can tell that social media, in fact, they became the new bonfire of our, of our times. They're a place where people come together and um, interact with each other and share their stories. So in fact, we're not so much different from the cavemen before, we just do it in other ways. And stories, they are a central aspect in this relationship. So five tips for storytelling on social media, which are some things to take care of. First of all, shareability, because it's the real nature of social media to be shared, so make sure you enable people to share your message. Use the elements, so the, the message, the players, the conflict, the hero, and the plot. Try to fit, on, fit in all those elements when building a story. 
Also, be concise because your story cannot be too complex. There are so many messages in this world, people have no time on the other side. So you have to be uh, concise and quick in what you have to tell and don't make the storyline too complex. Then the consumer is the hero. In the story of I am Amsterdam, there was a very clear example of making your consumer the hero. It's not um, the story of you as a city that you're telling, but the story of the people who are um, experiencing that city. And when your message comes across with a hero that is known by other people, it will be much stronger. And last of all, use the media mix. So don't uh, restrict to only one channel or one, um, one media but try to use more next to each other. So I want to take you through a brief uh, case that we've done at Brandholm. Um, it's a bit of a controversial case because it's a political campaign. And I'll start right away by saying it's not because um, we do a political campaign as a, as a company that it's our true belief of everybody in the company, but of course it's a brand like any, any other. So it's the NVA case, a political campaign, which goal was to um, make their political agenda meaningful to people and clear and easy to understand. Because they want to become the biggest party in the, in the country, and as you may, might know, we're divided in two parts, Flanders and Wallonia. And it's a Flemish party, so in the Flemish part, because they're rather pro Flemish part, they um, wanted to gain more than 30% of the votes. So what was our campaign strategy? We tried to really incorporate uh, storytelling into that campaign by using real people and their real stories in a fully integrated platform. And the campaign was built up in two large blocks. We had a pre-campaign, uh, the real campaign and the post campaign. And the pre campaign, we started by putting in front um, real members of the political party, so not the politicians themselves, but the real members who told why their story could relate to the story of NVA. Um, and those stories, they were um, bundled into tw 25 commitments, so the commitments they made to um, do while if they would win. And they told their story around those commitments. Then the second phase, of course, when it comes to political campaign, the politicians need to come on the foreground after a while. So we used the same format to make politicians tell their story. And we, we didn't want to say, and they want this, and they want that. But we tried to make them tell, I'm a mother as well, so I want to have good childcare for my children as well. Because, of course, these people, they are people and not politicians in the first place, and they choose, chose to um, join the, the political party because of their beliefs and not because of the beliefs of the party. So we want to get out all the stories of that people and integrate them in the campaign. So a result of using storytelling and all other factors, of course, in the campaign and the political party was that they won the election with an overshoot of their targets. They got more than 30% in the Flemish part. Their online community grew with over 600% because we were very active on social media with these stories. And they established the image of game-changing campaign uh, and political party. Because in Flanders, they were the first one to use social media and online so actively in their campaign. So, um, last of all, I want to tell you something about Brandholm. So, we are a branding communication agency, which started in 1995. And it's our mission to ensure above market growth for our customers' brand. So, every case we do, that's our our first KPI to ensure market growth. Uh, we are very strategic, uh, st strategically focused because we evolved from a knowledge center into a fully integrated um, agency. So it started out by just bundling uh, know-how, bringing together insights from people, and then building it up as a real uh, advertising agency. If you want to discover more about our history, you can find it out at brenthomemuseum.com. So our um, unique selling proposition is the, the strong focus on brand knowledge, which is uh, fueled by marketing, marketing, marketing creativity to uh, really bring campaigns to life. Then, to wrap it up for my part, which are the takeaways? So story are the oldest belief systems to engage people. They're not new, but they're very powerful. Brands are stories as well, and they can survive over time because if they're told in a good way and they're experienced in a good way, they will 
touch people and touch their emotions, which is much more powerful than just um, trying to convince them with functional aspects. Um, success stories must be triple A, so always make sure you're authentic, accountable, and activating. Telling is selling. So uh, storytelling has a goal in the end. It has a goal to sell your brand. Uh, so make sure you are activating and you engage people to buy your brand and to experience your brand. And social media are the bonfire of contemporary storytelling. So now you're all ready to write your own brand or destination history. Thanks. Mm -hmm.